It's really asking an awful lot of a researcher to be reflexive <laughs> now I come to think about it. That's what qualitative inquiry is about, isn't it? I don't care who you are, you have to live in the world. So, 2016 Congress, you also managed to catch up with Marcelo Diversi. David, do you remember when you first met Marcelo? Again, it was another uh, chance encounter at that he first with it. Claudio, two Brazilian men. Can't help but get one's attention, shall we say. Um, and then it was, I suppose, I became most familiar with their work when their book, um, Between a Talk, uh, was published, which I remembered buying at one of the conferences. Mm. I was flying back to the UK, connecting in Amsterdam. So I did the long transatlantic flight, sort of early one morning in Amsterdam airport, started reading it and came that close to missing my connecting flight <laughs> back to Leeds. So it's a good read. <laughs> it yes, was a privilege to hear a little bit more firsthand about his background and talk about life in Brazil as a child. And that guitar music that I can hear in the background. Yeah, that's Marcelo playing. Fantastic. I remember sitting outside the back during a break in the Congress, sharing a few tunes a few years ago. Yeah, something really nice about relaxing and sharing music with other colleagues at conference. Shall we hear from Marcelo now? My name is Marcelo Diversi. It was lovely that we got to play the guitar a little bit outside and that helped me wake up a little more. I am an associate professor um, at Washington State University in Vancouver, and that's not Vancouver, BC, it's Vancouver, Washington, um, just outside of Portland. On the west coast of America. Yes, yes, almost falling the edge, you know, of North America into the Pacific. And tell me what? Um, what questions are you interested in answering through your research? I think the, uh, the one question, idea that I've been thinking about, learning about, revisiting for so many years, I think since I started, you know, uh, probably in, my undergraduate education, or maybe towards the middle of my undergraduate education, but certainly for the last many years has been, you know, uh, why do we tend to treat each other so poorly, and why do we tend to do that, you know, always in that space between us and them, you know, so there are so many ways to try and understand that, and it's really broad, so, um, after many, many, many years of uh, trying to understand that space, how we got there, how we live it, you know, so often, and how difficult it is to mm -hmm. um, to increase, you know, the circle of us and shrink and decrease the circle of them um, to a point where maybe that's not, you know, so present or relevant anymore. Um, and after so many years, I still am not really sure <laughs> how to do it, but that's, that has been the central concern of um, what I've been looking at. I mean, I use, you know, things like, uh, you know, uh, concepts, that, you know, that are like social justice, um, mm -hmm. environmental justice, um, as, as guides, you know, as to, as to what I would like to see, you know, as... Um, um, could, I, could I ask, how did you get to that position? To, to ask those questions? What was I think it? it comes, most of it at least, from having grown up um, in Brazil. You know, a country so full of contrast. You know, and I happened to, you know, be born to a family that was, you know, uh, more well off than the vast majority, you know, of uh, uh, fellow, you know, Brazilians. And um, so I was born and raised in Sao Paulo, you know, a very large city, you know, the urban center, you know, Brazil, so a city that ha has had the first world and the third world, and they are, you know, juxtaposed on top of each other. So 
you know, I was seeing that difference every day. So I don't remember, I don't have my own memories about this. My, my family tells me, you know, stories of me being a young child, you know, asking questions, you know, about, you know, uh, who's gonna, you know, see, you know, uh, children in the streets, you know, um, or with families living under the bridges. And you know, my concern was, you know, who's gonna give them Christmas gifts, you know, or, or who's gonna take care of them? And, you know, why it's cold? Why don't they have, you know, clothes on and that kind of stuff. And uh, my mom said that, you know, that used to break her heart so much that she, she always tried to redirect my attention when we were going through, you know, extremely poor parts of the city, you know, so I wouldn't see it because uh, she didn't, have answers, you know, to those questions. Uh, so I think some of it must come from, you know, that uh, sense of how do like, we, you know, you know I, figure out ways to, you know, treat each other better, you know, to, you know, decrease some, you know, suffering, um, mm -hmm. and um, meet each other, you know, in places where, you know, we don't need to just be so. Um, uh, angry with each other and trying to make our own, you know, points all the time. So I'm not saying that I'm not, you know, guilty of it, but I think I've always tried, you know, to, mm -hmm. to find that space in, in between mm -hmm. people. So how do you go about that? What, what methods do you use? Interacting with people and um, trying to understand the logic behind, you know, uh, um, the tribal mentality that I see everywhere, you know, that I've been, you know, I visited many countries, you know, throughout my, my life so far, and within countries, you know, living in the United States, I've been here for 25 years, I mean, it's right. a country of immigrants, I'm mm. really large, right, so the possibilities of actually, you know, mingling with people from so many different countries, yes. you know, it's, it's very, you know, intense and, and happens often, so um, I... I think knowledge seeking has been so the formal understanding, you know, so I started by trying to understand <laughs> the classics, you know, uh -huh. you know, uh, and they were mostly European and North American. <laughs> and then I moved on, you know, to, you know, third world, you know, uh, thinkers and post-colonial, you know, uh, scholars and artists. Um, and then, you know, I, I even have gone, you know, through, you know, uh, um, evolutionary theory and understanding us as a species so uh, you know I don't like the divide be, you know be, that we tend to have in our discipline especially you know we don't like to think about biolog biological determination you know mm -hmm. so much you know but uh, I don't I think we are biology as well we are species we are animals and I have been trying to understand us from that context as well mm -hmm. but always coming back to you know the classic humanities you know to understand how we express you know this tribalism you know and the desire to overcome it you mm -hmm. know, in uh, in literature in pop culture you know and even the way we actually develop you know knowledge you know within the social science education mm -hmm. um, so I don't think that's a method you know um, but you know I think that's a way to try and understand as much as I can humanity um, beyond what I, as an individual, can grasp, you know, just from my own existence. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an endless pursuit, I, you know, I know I'll never get there, but it seems like a, a worthwhile journey, mm. you know, to, to keep on trying to do it. It's very important for us to not just think about the other, but you know, connect, you know, emotionally. So, you know, for my dissertation and you know, in the book and a lot of publications, I use you know, short stories and I, you know, uh, about my encounters with the others. So, because the, the intent there is not to interpret the other. You know, for the reader, but to bring you in with me, you know, as we meet, you know, the other, and then hopefully, if I do, you know, an okay job, you know, you can actually be there with me in the streets, for example, and feel, you know, a common humanity with, you know, the other street children, you know, that you mm -hmm. would otherwise know, you know, beyond, you know, the, that flattened, you know, stereotype that, you know, tends to be inevitable. Yeah, or the statistics that X number of kids in Brazil are on the street. Or right, yeah, and, and, and just the pain of it, you know, poor kids. And yeah. so, 
you know, you pitying can, can, that right. You... you can see there's you know there have fuller you know experiences and um, and um, the stories allow people to you know for a moment, right? I mean, have a little glimpse, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps what what it is like to be in that position and and find commonalities in the you know and the positive things too in the irreverence, right? And the humor and and the care. And, and you know how crafty you know they can be. So you know you make you know people who you may not know, people who actually suddenly become a little more familiar to you. And it's much harder you know to be dismissive, mm -hmm. you know, heartless, violent, you know, towards people who you resonate with. So for me, that's the main power of this type of work. You know that there is a, a the possibility of. Um, meeting each other in a, in a space where we can see each other, you know, um, in, in our common causes. Mm -hmm. you know, and that I think that emotionally makes us more connected. So I think most of my work, hopefully, you know, yeah, tries to, um, to present, you know, a, my encounter, you know, with, uh, with the world that way. Mm -hmm. So it's an invitation, you know, come with me and, you know, see, you know, how this works for you. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if it works, so, but... <laughs> It works for me. <laughs> about what um, indigenous scholars have brought to the table and have helped us realize with our scholarship. My own understanding, you know, of the indigenous uh, turn, you know, in academia, I was exposed to it uh, very early on, you know, before I came to the United States in the late 80s, I participated in the movement against, you know, what now is the Belo Monte Dam, it was called Cararao before, so a monster hydropower plant, you know, in the middle of the Amazon, and I was in college, and I could see, you know, a, a Kasiki Haoni, you know, a chief, you know, from a particular tribe there who was very vocal, you know, against, you know, that, and I, it was easy to understand, you know, at that age, you know, at 20, 21, that, you know, why would you plop, you know, monster, you know, construction, you know, interrupt a river, you know, right in the middle of, you know, a very sensitive, rich, you know, ecological area, you know, area. And so I was curious to understand what's the rationale, you know, uh, for people to do it. And also curious to understand what did the people who live there have to say. So I, I try and create that, you know, sense in the classrooms. I try to bring, you know, a knowledge that are outside of, you know, of, you know, mainstream knowledge and textbooks, you know. Uh, um, and in my writing, I, I really try to, uh, to bring, you know, uh, ways of thinking about um, people or human experience that are outside of, you know, dominant, you know, tradition, mm -hmm. right, of the, you know, especially mm -hmm. in our area, you know. Uh, outside of the European, you know, and North American traditions of ways of knowing. So you know, I, I do have a, a concern that, you know, um, like personally, you know, I confess I'm not very optimistic, you know, mm -hmm. that we're going to make it, you know. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's maybe too difficult to overcome our, you know, tribal, mm -hmm. you know, um, tendencies and uh, language, uh, but collectively, you know, doing mm -hmm. this work, you know, with so many people actually yeah. doing this from so many angles actually makes me hopeful that together, mm -hmm. you know, there may, may find, you know, ways to, you know, <laughs> make things a little less unfair, less unjust, less mm -hmm. painful, you know, mm -hmm. for, for so many people. So I love that. How we put that was beautiful. How can we increase the circle of us, mm -hmm. invite people in, widen that circle, yeah. and decrease the circle of them? What a great way of talking about what I think we're trying to do as well, yeah. qualitative researchers. Absolutely. I love how he's talking about his life as this journey of, of learning and you take that learning from anywhere. You know, what I experience often in psychology and sports, it's got to be scientific knowledge. Why well, can't we use any kind of knowledge that we can get our hands on? You know, if that wisdom comes through a song, or through a story, or through spending time with people, through 
through film, through travel, through reading books that are, you know, written a century ago. There's a time to fly and a time to walk.